<laughs> let's talk with Bob in Utah. I'm really excited about this call, Bob, because I have only recently been diving into this, and I agree with you, and I think we're on the same page here, um, but I'm really excited to hear what you have to bring to the table. Uh, Bob is talking about uh, the first cause arguments for God Ooh. and how presentism, the A theory of time, I believe, is kind of presumed to be a thing in these, and it's not actually borne out in the science. So okay, um, I I have so much that yeah. I need to learn on this. Uh, go 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 on, go for it. <laughs> Hi, uh, Avi, Eric. Thanks for having me out on the call. Hey, Bob. Uh, so uh, my 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 first thing was that I wanted to talk about how. Well, I, I already talked about. It. You already introduced the topic. So uh, the idea that presentism is presupposed seems very crucial and, and if you want to do, do, do you want to talk about like what presentism is Please. or or how, how do we want yeah. so this, I, this there's this idea that that the present the, the what we're experiencing right now is somehow ontologically privileged uh in 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 time and that uh, the, this idea that time is sort of progressing forward and that every moment that we experience is the present uh, rather than time being sort of this this just this thing that exists, uh, and 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 I, and I see uh, people arguing for first cause type arguments using this presupposition that the first the the the, the, the beginning of time is somehow a privileged uh, uh, imp implies sort of a privileged idea of time uh, that uh, and the present, and and it just nobody talks about it. Yeah. Okay. So. What alternatives are there? Well, the alternative would be eternalism, or there's some other uh, ideas called like the growing block. The, 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 eternalism is, is is the main one that I that I would kind of th I think is is philosophically interesting. Okay, so uh, so that is, if, if 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 I believe that we are experiencing the present moment, um, yeah. and that it is moving forwards, so I'm moving forward in time. Um, yeah. Is that nullified by eternalism? Well, so our perception of time is largely due to the fact that our brains and our, our bodies are, are, are embedded in the universe. And when you think of, of time as just kind of another dimension, you, you instead think of the universe as, as a shape. And, and, and time is just one dimension of that shape. Anyway, that's that's not. I, I could go off on a whole tangent on that. But. Yeah. So I I want to I want to maybe uh, break this down just a little bit more, Bob. I think you did a good job there. Um, and oh, sorry. Forgive me if I'm not quite getting that. This is still something that is relatively new for me as well, but it's exciting. So essentially, the two primary options here are a theory of time, which is presentism, and B theory of time, which is closer to the concept of eternalism and actually is more borne out. I believe the, uh, the uh, theory of relativity actually leans towards the B theory of time and te tends to throw some, some, some question marks up there if we're trying to get to the A, a theory of time. Is that correct? It, it absolutely does, and, yeah. and, and honestly, it's actually borne out in in pretty much all of our physics because um, a, a lot of our physics uh, uh, representations, all our physics representations, have this property of of time reversibility, or at least as far as I understand, that's the case. And the the the, the time reversibility basically just means that given uh, the, the the physics works forwards and backwards. Uh, there's no privileged uh, uh, reference frame that we can find in the physics for really? time. Um, like, like, like time, time is just, it's just another dimension and the relationship between, between points in space time is represented in the laws of physics as we understand them. So I, um, I, 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 I got to push back because I'm so confused. My understanding of time isn't that it's a dimension. It's that it is intrinsically you know, on the same, um, it's on, it, it's, it's intrinsically tied to, um, energy and matter. And I wouldn't say that matter is a dimension. I don't wouldn't say that energy is a dimension, but I would say that those things are related to each other. When you adjust one, you, you are necessarily adjusting another. And I understand well, that 
intellectually, I could, you know, run calculations and 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 move things backwards. But just because I can run a calculation hypothetically does not mean that that hypothetical is borne out in reality. It just means that you're able to run the hypothetical. And so when you talk about time going backwards, it's 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 almost like for me, if if somebody said, Eric, you're experiencing the color blue, we can shift it, right? And the light is moving, you know, the photons are bouncing off of whatever you're looking at and are hitting your eye. And we can talk about that. And that's all kind of a progression in one direction. And but if we talked about the light, you know, going backwards, it's like I understand that hypothetically we can talk about these things, but that's not necessarily how I think that works to my understanding. Yeah, I, I, I do want to reel this in a little bit because I think that this is a fundamental misunderstanding of the, the, the conversation. Well, okay. um, the, the point that I want to make sure that Bob gets to and that I'm excited about is the concept of the present as a fixed period of time as opposed to the past, which is a fixed period of time, and the future, which is a fixed period of time is the A theory of time. There, it chunks it into sections, and we are experiencing the present. And how long the present is actually varies quite a bit depending on the apologist you're talking to and the scenario in which they're trying to explain things. But that is that concept, whereas the B theory of time is more of a fluid state where everything is essentially happening at once and we are experiencing what we call the present, but that's not linear, or at least not in the same way. And so that actually is borne out in things like the theory of relativity. It looks more like we might be experiencing B theory of time as opposed to A theory. And people like William Lane Craig have explicitly said that their versions of first cause arguments, like the Kalam, is inherently tied to a theory of time. They have fully verbally bought into this theory. And as we're doing more and more research into physics, into science, we're realizing that a theory of time is not a given. Like, it's almost, like, it's, it's not only not a given, it's tentative at best. And so I think, Bob, I don't want to take. I don't want to steal your thunder. But is is that is that about right? <laughs> that, that, that's about right. And I want to make it clear that I'm not uh, saying that I take a, a position that eternalism or or presentism is 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 correct uh, or or incorrect. I'm, I'm taking the position that I that, that these arguments uh, are are presupposing presentism, and I don't think that our current understanding justifies that. And I would say that it leans towards. Uh, eternalism, mm -hmm. given what you described about about the, our understanding of relativity. Right. So you're saying that there would be a lot of beneficial conversations had if instead of arguing about whether or not the universe began to exist, for example, or what caused the beginning of the universe, which are the traditional methods to go down when talking about the Kalam. Uh, yep talk about, hey, did you know that William Lane Craig directly tied his version of the Kalam, which is the standard one used by apologists now, to a theory of time that is not a given and is in fact uh, on like shaky ground at best, and then bring it into that realm, a more scientific discussion as opposed to keeping it in that philosophical realm? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, th I think that those discussions are important to have, and I think that they could give rise to some very interesting uh, interaction. I am so excited for for the next person who wants to argue about first cause to call into this show because this has been something I've been sitting on for so long. I've been this has been the smoking gun in my pocket. Really? And I am so excited to have this conversation with somebody who thinks that they can defend the A theory of time. Um, if you are interested in learning more about this, Apologia did an episode on this and it laid it out really nicely. I'll make sure it's linked in the description uh, of this video. I know that this got a little bit heady, <laughs> um, but Bob, <laughs> thank you for calling in. That made my day, honestly. Well, it's been wonderful talking with you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mind trip for sure. And I don't know very much more about it than what I've explained here, but it's fascinating. So I'm not behind it, not yet. 
so I, I, I asked, I, I brought up where I'm having, where I had an issue. Um, and I think I just need to learn more because at this point in time, if I were to say, well, what about, how have you dis how, how have you excluded the B theory of time? And they were to say, well, where's the problem? I'd be like, I don't effing know. <laughs> um, so I would, I would definitely be out of my depth if I were to take that position without knowing and understanding and accepting more. Mm -hmm. uh, because right now I just do not have that info. Like I have so many questions about causality, um, <laughs> you know, but like, yeah, ju ju just the, the, the way that those things were phrased were being treated in ways that I'm not used to things being phrased. And mm -hmm. that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I'm also not willing to grant that maybe the phrasing is causing something to be tangentially true and being taken as, you know, more than anyway. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting way off base, but I want to learn more about it. If uh, you guys in the chat uh, have more information or have something that's um, not, you know, huge, um, like, you know, may, maybe a mini doc or something that I can read, send it to contactskepticgeneration at gmail.com because I would love to read it. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, like, first of all, be patient with Eric. Eric just had his entire concept of time questioned. So that's enough to make anybody feel weird it is it <laughs> but is. also i love the fact that you're like hey i've been part of this conversation i'm not convinced yet i'm not going to say that you're wrong or that it's not accurate but before i come to a conclusion i'm going to go look into this myself yeah absolutely. which is a, all that we want to do here and and for people who are wondering i'm not angry when I get this way, it's because I'm excited about the topic and I want to push more. Um, but I know it can come off that way. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Uh, Shannon Q is in the chat, by the way. Hey, Shannon. Welcome, Shannon. Nice to see you. Um, all right.